All right, next question would be, why lime? Right, spontaneous trip. Well, it's not really spontaneous. I had to pick up some more lime. And we're now here down at Lime Base, which is where I've ordered it from last year. I need eight more bags, but I thought, if possible, whilst I'm here, we will ask Joe uh, if he can answer some rapid fire questions for you. Hi folks, we're down at Lime Base today and I've asked Joe very kindly to um, give us a bit of a tour and also to ask some questions because I, I know a lot of people ask questions when we're doing projects on repointing all the walls. So I'm going to go right to the source and, uh, and get you the info. Uh, I had some questions which I thought I might grill you on. One is best time of year if you're repointing because I think most people who are watching the videos are in the same sort of scenario as us where someone's bodged it with cement. Right, well, um, I would say uh, it's usually spring to autumn. Yeah. That's your time of year. I, I, <clears throat> I personally like spring. Okay. Because you haven't got, you have, you're out the frost and you haven't got the burning hot weather. No. Either end of the, the weather, you know, you've got frost, doesn't like it, and it doesn't want to be cooked, it wants no, to no. cure. So spring to autumn, but then if you, if you start saying, well, the job got pushed back, and I'm now in September, October. Yeah. And you're filling it in, and you've got an area that holds wet anyway. Yeah. You don't want that to still be live when we have some heavy frost. No, no. It's the sinkers, what I call the sinkers, that are the evil ones. You know, not above freezing during the day, minus five. Not above freezing, minus eight. That's just going to get right in there and it'll pick it apart if there's right, any okay. live material in there. I mean, we ended up, we were in November, luckily it was the mild part of November, but I was sheeting up with a Hessian, you know, all, all the yeah. time. And, yeah. and I think, having been up there this week, we got away with it. But yeah, I mean, almost today's weather is probably just as bad in the dry yeah, and, you know, and windy. You, and... you know, your foundation, as you know, Tim, from you wet the wall down really well, you flush the joints out you introduce that foundation. Yeah, it takes is, so much water as well. It just yeah. soaks it up. And if you're, depending on what, what you're, you're dealing with, you've got that, so you, you put the water into it, so when you put the mortar in, you can control the drying of it. Yeah. It's, you know, I've had it before, where you know, I've, it's somebody, I said, you know, you've got to wet the wall down, and, and they haven't done it enough. It's like lime washing. Lime washing at this, in this temperature, you know, you wet it down, okay, you've mixed your material up, you're just starting to apply it. What do you think's gone on there? That's gone, that moisture's gone. Yeah, yeah. You need yeah. to be able to, you're only putting a, a wash on, a micro thin layer, so you want that to cure slowly. So, yeah. So, it's all, yeah, so the time of year, <clears throat> you know, if you decide to do it out of kilter at the wrong time of year, yeah. Um, then you you know, as you know, the protection you have to put on. Extra precautions. People say, yeah. well, how much protection? How deep is the frost? You know, I yeah, mean, that's yeah. where where you're at. So yeah. You, you, you you've got to be aware of it. So, so uh, this this week, just keep damping the hessian and still hang that over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, it's just that's what you've got to do. If you've got to if you're going to do it at the wrong time of year, you've got to be on your game. Yeah. Next question yeah. would be, why lime? Why lime? Well, you, you, what's so good about like lime? Well, um, all you have to do is go around and look at some lovely old buildings, and you see that the deterioration of the stone due to the fact that it's been um, it's been pointed in, yeah. or built with the wrong material, it doesn't allow it to breathe. So you know the beautiful thing about lime is it takes the moisture on, but it releases it. Mm -hmm. So you know uh, I had somebody in this week. They took the render off and it was absolutely saturated behind. Yeah. Old building, little or no foundations. It has a tendency to move depending on what time of year it is, what it's built on. And you've put this rigid material yeah. on top that's impervious, so it breaks, cracks, water in, can't get out. No. And um, yeah, so, and then it allows for a bit of flexibility. Yeah, yeah. If you've ever seen a lime wall as I have, that is leaning at that particular angle when it all sort of edit, you know, the, the stones are all moving out. It's still holding. It's still, it's still there. Yeah. Whereas if you had a rigid brick wall. Just suddenly go. Yeah. Yeah. And a uh, nice thing there is that you can take those stones down, you can clear, clean them off, 
You can even take the old mortar and enrich it with a bit of lime and maybe a bit of grit sand. Yeah. And you can rebuild that wall. Yeah, and I've heard, um, I've heard that myself in the, the actual mortar because we've reclaimed so much stone and we've been able to reuse that. Um, yeah. And it cleans off so nicely. Yeah. But I mean, I never even knew you could reuse the Yeah, you, the you, you in, enrich it with a bit more so you're almost using that as an aggregate. Yeah. A bit of coarse sand maybe, just so that you, you know, you're not going to have something that's going to And I can believe it because the mortar that I had in, in those bags is rock solid. And I know, and I just thought, yeah, if I hadn't spoken to you last year, I probably would have ditched it. And you were like, just beat, beat it up a bit and uh, just kind of that, no water. Well, yours, yours was uh, a perfect example because you beat it up and it came back to life. Nice yeah, and yeah. viable. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, then you, and as it gets older, it gets better. Yeah, yeah. So you, you had some nice material there you could point in uh, and looked after well, prepared well. You weren't going to have a mass amount of shrinkage. I mean, it's great material. You just follow it. Uh, and look after it and it pays dividends. Yeah. yeah. Obviously if people are using lime is they look after these. Yeah. And most importantly they look after these. I was gonna say that, let's you know, quick chat on kit on kit. I mean it doesn't take much equipment, does it? No. Um, once you once you've knocked it up, just simple, you know, yeah. you, you suggested that a little pointing iron and then uh, and then a hawk. This yeah. you, and, and a brush. And that's I, I, it. I always say with lime, you know, when you're pointing I say, if the tool don't fit, cut it to fit. Yeah, grind because it Because we don't want it on the arises of the stone or the face of the stone. When it's all wet, you won't see it. That no. You touch that. When it all dries out and you've got white feathers all around the joints, it looks awful. Do you know what? I think we're, our like, white life is quite forgiving on that. I, I imagine yeah. doing red brick would be a nightmare. Yeah, exactly. Whereas, you know, ours, it kind of blends. It's quite a natural yeah, match. Yeah. But. Um, and then, so like you were saying, safety-wise, obviously gloves and goggles. Yeah. What happens if you get it in your eye? Do you know what I usually say to people? I say, have a, have a bottle of Coke, fill, oh, okay. fill, it, fill it full of water, yeah. if you haven't got all the... And I said... Just water? Just schluss it out. Uh, you know, I've read got, some comments about it, it has to have to be an acid wash or something, but yeah, to well, neutralise yeah, it. I just think, you know... But I'm not sure I want vinegar in my eye either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just want to, you, you know... Yeah. The thing is with it, if you slush it out and you're all right, if it can, continues to hurt and everything else, get down A and E. Yeah, yeah. And they'll, uh, I don't know, what they used Neutralize to do. Neutralise it ir somehow. Ir irrigate the eye out until it's a neutral pH. Yeah. But don't be, I always say, don't be frightened of it. Just give it the respect it's due. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the key to it. Well, How many of the um, colours are there? I don't know. I, I, I haven't got a clue, but I don't know <laughs> if anybody else in the country does so many standards. And do they match mainly the West Country or is it all over? No, it's... No, it's all... It's, you can find you know, something I, to I, match I, most. There's a chap up in, in Glossop. Don't ask me where that is, but I know it's up up the ways. Well, he, he, he uses our BA2 quite a lot. Uh, okay. And our BA2 is like a coarse bar stone mix. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you know, you've It got, must match something, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's what suits, really. So the different sands is what gives them the different colours and characteristics. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, this is our ginger sand here. So we've got quite a lot of hamstone rent. You know, that's a local stone. Yeah. So people want something that's got a little bit, bit of warmth to it. Yeah. Uh, that sort of complements the stone. Because often, you know, it's like you with yours. Yeah, yeah, had to blend you've got, in. You've got lias there. Yeah. And sometimes I have people come in, I want it grey. So lias is grey anyway or you've got white lias as well. If you've got grey and then it tiddles down with rain, you've got a marker pen that you've just put round each of the stones. Yeah. So you want something that, you know, if you can, depending on what's existing there, you want to either match that as best you can, or let's complement the stone. Yeah. Let's not make it a dark, depressing wall. <laughs> so, you know, the one that you've got, Tim, the W20, well, that's got a little bit of PFA in it, as I explained to you at the time. That's the black. Which, which, uh, which gives it that little bit of grey. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's got a black fleck in it. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of imitating, if you like, a black ash mortar mm -hmm. or an ash mortar. So this, a certain amount of this is in your W20. Yeah. So this is what we see when we knock it back to get the texture. This is yeah. the bits that show yeah. through, isn't it? Yeah, when you give beat it, it back in there. Yeah. So that gives it, um, yeah. Is it stronger as well if it's bigger aggregate? Well, you've got a better of... balance, of course, medium and fine, so you create a good mortar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, that's a, it, 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 that's a great sound. Yeah, yeah. You know. 
So these are all what makes up all those different blends in the bags. Yeah, you know, all the that's what yeah, varies. Yeah. Yeah, and then obviously, Tim, you you, you may put in a bit of um, uh, stone dust for colour. We've got a couple of red sands, you know, in round talking to go. So you've got you got some, you know, so we can supply that there. Yeah. In the mortars, TM12 and TM47. So it's all it's all a combination yeah, yeah, yeah. of yeah. It's like a palette, isn't it? Yeah, a paint, paint yeah, palette. Exactly. You, you know, we've just spent our time. Um, we've been here what 20, 27 years. Oh wow! So, so you just sort of end up creating. Yeah. And that's the CWS one. So that one has got more of the coarse material in there. Right. So you know, for our general building model, GBM two, which is literally our general building model, which yeah. you can use for pointing you can use for your material it. yeah. it's like a base to it okay yeah, so, yeah. which gives it you know a good strong mix so i was going to ask that the bags that we're using obviously we're using for repointing yes. if you're building a new section of stonework yeah. would you use the same stuff in between the stones and repoint with that or is there a general purpose well there you go the thing is that the speed of build in which we want these days yeah you know, there's there's not many out there can afford the luxury of using a lime All the way based through. mortar yeah. because of the build rate would be impaired by okay. the fact that it you relies on carbonate, carbonated slowly over a period of time. So you imagine your wall, Tim. Yeah. So you, it's got rubble in the centre and you're building it. You keep building it, keep building it, and the yeah, thing okay. starts swimming. The so works, originally they would have only been able to go up a certain bit. You would have had a steady build rate. Yeah. So if today you said you had a load to, to um, uh, that you wanted to refill, I'd say, Tim, it may be one of those things that you get a good quality sand, appropriate sand, use a hydraulic line. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, that you've got a rate of build going, but yeah. by connection with which you gain a set. So it means that the chances, you've still got to respect its line. Yeah, yeah. But so you, that still wouldn't need any cement, that's still a lime, but it's no just cement. a hydro, no, yeah, no, okay. Because you've got this different strengths of hydraulic lime, so you've got NHL 2, 3.5 yeah. and 5. So your build rate, you, you, you'd be able to build at a, a reasonable rate, like I say, you're still going to respect its lime. Um, and then, yeah, and then you could, you know, in certain circumstances, people left it well recessed back. And then, and then use the matching, point. yeah. yeah. Others, they just want to point and build as they go. Yeah. And that's okay. where, you know, on occasion we do a blended sand. So it's got various bits in it. It's just, it's just blended and then on site you mix. Right, okay. Part. And it can be used for everything then, yeah. bedding and, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, the, the idea of actually uh, pointing in afterwards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to go back up there yeah, again. You don't really want to go back up there. So, yeah, there's various, and, and they're all, all, these are all the bag sand. So you obviously you do internal stuff as well for, Plastering and yeah, 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 yeah. We do a um, hair plaster, yeah. Obviously, that's made to order because you've got the hair in there, they've got the high alkaline lime, yeah, and that just dissolves the hair. So, it's one okay. of those things I always say best practice put the hair in just before application, or if we mix it here, you use it as soon as possible, yeah. You get it on there because you know, if it's if it remains wet. The, the so is the hair in even the, the final bit as well, the final There can skin. be on occasions, I mean okay. we don't often supply that, no, no. sometimes you'll have a fine goat hair cut fine and you'll have that in there. So that is almost like you'd have plastic fibres in a modern day concrete, you I know, do, it's, I it's do, doing I, the same thing. I do a, a plastic fibred one, Okay. Um, DK3 and uh, MK1, which you know, um, it, it, it creates a, a good strong Good strong mortar. So it is, it's just stopping the hairline cracks and stuff. It's going to just, bind it yeah, all. Yeah, holds it all together yeah. nicely. We've and the, and these would so if you had to re repair certain areas, this is just a modern day version of the last that we've got throughout. Or these are sawn lars. So these are sawn softwood lars. Yeah. So these are like the Ford Escort tin. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then the Rolls Royce is your oak riven lars. Split. Yeah. Okay. But uh, they are uh, expensive. Pricey. Yeah, but you've so, got all that strength in there. If you were doing a listed building and they wanted you to go this route, they wouldn't necessarily specify you had to go with oak. This is still ticking the box. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, they just sometimes they say, no, you can't have, you know, they, they, will, they will specify what they want you to use. Oh, well, even, say, even the timber? Yeah, yeah oh, wow. oak riven or, or, you know, because we, we've done hardwoods oak saw, you know, which are obviously yeah. stronger. But, um, you know, often if I was doing it myself and I was doing a ceiling, I'd be having riven. Right, okay. Because it's, it's a lot stronger. But there's a bit more variation in it. But I guess yeah, there's it, variation in it, bends and twists and... Yeah, but the, but the plaster will take account of that and yeah. build up, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. If anyone else has got any questions, we'll get them to stick them down in the comments section of this video. And then hopefully between us, we'll be able to answer some of those questions. And hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight into what's going on behind the scenes. And we need to get back now and crack on before it gets too hot. Well, there we go. Thank you, Joe. I sprung that on him. Didn't even tell him I was coming. Um, good to have proper info right from the source. Uh, Joe has become my lime guru and um, any questions, he's always really helpful. And some of those blends, like you said, the blends are match all over the country. So people are, you know, ordering this to match in uh, stonework from you know Scotland down so although we're down in Somerset now and he's got all those you know a lot more specifically blended to match a lot of the bar stone white lias grey lias ham stone and all that um, if you do want to repoint with lime which you should do if you someone's smacked cement render all over your house or pointed it up with cement get it out get the lime in there and you're just already the whole life the, the whole wall has come to life it doesn't look gray and drab because that's not all the gray strips in between the nice cream stone ours the whole wall just looks you know whole color tone different um and it's coming up really nicely so a huge thank you to joe i will leave a link down below to their website and also i think there's a couple of videos on there which joe had forgotten about and it shows some of the process of mixing and blending some of those lime mortars um that we've got so and there we go, back to our wall, back to the marathon that is our line work. We are about two thirds of the way through now. There'll be one final video on this stage. We're working across right to left and we're, as you can see, getting to that corner. So yes, it was low production value. It was just a little GoPro I happened to have in the car at the time, but hopefully that was a good way of just getting some information direct from source and uh, what it lacked in camera angles Hopefully it made up for in Joe's amazing lime knowledge. We already had a bunch of people asking for the precise mix that we're using. We are using the W20, uh, which is one of their blends, which is kind of a very good match for the North Somerset lime mortars. Um, and if you head over to their website, you'll find that one on there, along with a whole palette of colors and uh, textures, hopefully should match something. And once we finish this wall in the next video, I'll talk about how much it's cost, how much material we've got through and things like that, because hopefully that's a good uh, guide for some people who might be looking to do a similar amount of work. I can work it down on a square meter basis and perhaps that will give you a, a decent idea of what material you might need to order. Anyway, thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.